Hey guys, insight number two. So we're in First Nephi chapter 17 for this one, but for the first thing, we're going back to our first week's lessons where we talked about what your focus is will be, you know, how you're going to behave, like your that illusion, uh, frequency illusion, where the more you look at something negative, then the more that's all you're going to see. And sometimes we need to get shocked out of it, and boy do they in this chapter. But let's see where it sort of starts. Well, started a while ago, but it kind of culminates in the end of 16 after Ishmael passes away and they've just got so much like heavy that they're working with. And it doesn't help that their wives now have lost their dad. Um, that's going to make for unhappy wife. And what's the saying? Unhappy wife, unhappy life. Um, so if they're wandering the wilderness further on from where they had settled in that little valley, going further... I don't know where they're going to. They're tired. Their dad dies. They have to leave him behind. It's all just a lot. And so I get it. But again, the focus needs to shift. So if you have a read of 35 through to 39, they're just angry and bitter and focused on ugly. And the voice of the Lord comes to them and, and chastises them. It says, um, in 39, it came to pass that the Lord was with us. Even the voice of the Lord came and did speak many words unto them and did chasten them exceedingly. After they were chastened by the voice of the Lord, they turned away their anger, repented of their sins, and the Lord was with them again, that they did not perish, that they got food, and they were all good. So have a look at that. And then look at, in chapter 17, we're going to look at verses 2 through 3, although it starts off in 1. It's talking about them bearing the children. Um... Two, it says, And so great were the blessings of the Lord upon us that while we did live upon raw meat in the wilderness, our women did give plenty of suck for their children and were strong, yea, even like unto the men, and they began to bear their journeyings without murmuring. Uh, it goes on in three to say that the commandments of the Lord were filled and that came, they were strengthened and they were nourished, they were provided for. And then in four, they did sojourn for the space of many years, yea, even eight years in the wilderness. This is an eight year walking camping trip. That does not sound like fun to me. And yet they did it with joy and gladness and goodness. Eight years of goodness without complaining. It can be done. And again, these people weren't evil that were complaining. Frustrate a lot of reasons and their focus in the wrong place. It's so easy to get caught up on all of that when you're continually focusing on the negative and the hard. And that's where you get stuck. Anyway. Um, they came to the land which they called Bountiful because of all the fruit and honey and like must have been amazing after eight years in the desert um, eating raw meat. This must have been amazing. And again, the the food that they had in the desert was made to taste sweet to them, um, which was good. And I think that the Lord does that too when we're really struggling and we've only got a particular food source. We're still able to eat it. Um, and get nourished from it. I've seen this. I've, I've myself have experienced this. It's incredible. Um, but again, you've got to be in that gratitude seeking, um, grateful. He will still bless you, but you're not going to see it as much. And because you don't see it as much, you don't embrace it. And then the blessings aren't as strong. So also in seven, um, once they've arrived at this lovely place, uh, seven, it says, came to pass, I've been in the bountiful space of many days. See, the Lord provides rest moments. He let them settle many days. We don't know how many days. Could have been nearly a year. Just settle, just be there. Um, they were having a good time. It was fine. Um, like camping at the beach. Now, that sounds better. Um, and it says to him at the end of that one, and oh, and eight, thou shalt construct a ship after the manner which I will show thee. I'm going to show you how to build a ship. Now, one of the things I really love about this, and I've talked about this when we did um, Old Testament as well, the faith that it had for Nephi to build a boat. He needed to build a boat. Now, he's building a boat right by the water. And he's like, okay. And his brethren around there thought it was impossible. Why are you doing this? This is, this is insanity. At least he's building a boat by the water. Noah built one in the mountains. They really must have thought he'd lost it. So... Sometimes when we're commanded by the Lord to do something, it's going to be a little obvious because it's right by the thing that we need to do. And sometimes it's going to be completely unobvious, like completely left field out of the box because it's not even near the thing that involves what we're doing. And only trusting in the Lord to do those things through us will 
bring that fruition because he goes he knows the plan he got he's got the the, the thing that's going to happen that we can't see so I always try to remember that when the Lord asked me to do something um, that I might find difficult or hard I ask myself is it by the water or in the mountains and they could be either and it just helps prepare me for what I need to do so I really love that too but I do get best pierced, periods and anyway um, he goes on he finds tools to make this he gets all the stuff uh, but in 17 when my brethren saw that I was about to build a ship they began to murmur against me saying our brother is a fool for he thinketh that he can build a ship yea and he also thinketh that he can cross these great waters they were giving up in blindness and unbelief and that caused them to have no motivation to help which Nephi needed them to help because they're kind of strong burly lads right um, and they failed to see that miracle and what do we miss because of spiritual blindness when we get to that, oh, what they're trying to do is ridiculous. And instead of embrace that and give it a go, we get, we give up. We have no motivation because we're sitting in spiritual blindness. So it's also a question to ask ourselves there. Um, and again, focusing in the wrong place, you'll see the whole story of them. They go over and they're talking, like he talks to them a lot about the children of Israel coming out of Egypt, and all the things the Lord did for them, and they wandered for 40 years. These guys haven't wandered that long, but they're still thinking it's hard done by. They get stuck in this. This is a really long chapter. There's so much goodness in it. Um, 51, he points out, like, if the Lord has such great power and he's wrought all these miracles, including the ones he's already given us, you don't think he's going to give us more? Like, but they're still stuck. So, in 53, it says, And it came to pass that the Lord said unto me, Stretch forth thine hand against thy, unto thy brethren, Again unto thy brethren, and they shall not wither before thee, but I will shock them, saith the Lord, and this will I do, that they may know that I am the Lord their God. So not to hurt them, but to wake them up, because sometimes we get so stuck in that negativity spiral that we kind of need a shake. So that happens, they get shaken back, um, shocked out of spiritual blindness. So have you ever felt... Did you ever, like, have you ever felt like this? Has this ever happened? Have you ever been shocked out of that? Um, how did you change your feelings when you were feeling this spiritual blindness, this unbelief and this lack of motivation that goes with these things? Um, have you ever felt that? I think I have a couple of times and I know that I've changed it. I'm pretty sure the Lord shocked me in my own different ways, but gratefully, those things have mostly faded. So they don't seem as harsh, and for that I'm grateful. Um, don't really want to be shocked again. No, I kind of like where I'm at, and would like to have more um, of that spiritual closeness with the Lord rather than less. So working in that direction. Um, but Nephi does discuss and hear their concerns, doubts, and frustrations. He does. He listens to them and tries to talk to them and counsel with them, but they just can't see it. He reminds them of what Heavenly Father and Jesus can do, but they're so blinded that he shakes them to awaken them. So yeah, has it ever happened to you? Do you ever get that, like, almost jolted feeling of, like, remember who you are? Um, maybe not so much a physical thing, or maybe it was a physical thing for you. I think for me it wasn't physical, but definitely a mental, like, not, not to be like physically painful but it was a mental like slap really um which is not a violent thing it was <laughs> you know wake up stop this because you do get so caught in it um you'll see children when they're tired and frustrated and a tantrum and they just need sleep um or they've had too much sugar and they just need to calm down and they'll get caught in the spiral of it doesn't matter what you offer them it's not going to be right no matter what you say or what you're going to do, they're just going to have a meltdown. And you'll see this in kids, but it happens in adults too. We just get better at covering it. So you just like have a nap, have something to eat, have a nap, and there'll be a like a regeneration there. Um, if you're not having that, then maybe you need a bit of a shock. But shocked out of spiritual blindness. Don't get caught in that. Work your way out of it. If you've got any ways that you got out of it, let us know. Because I'm like curious... Because I can't exactly remember mine other than I did. Which I'm grateful for. And I don't really want to experience it again. So if you can remember yours, let us know. Alright. Hang around. We're going to first Nephi 18.